The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shashina Roll. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news after exhausting all measures with the government, the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce has decided to let the courts decide whether new taxes under the 2013 Customs Management Act are indeed lawful. Charisma Robinson reports. The Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce representing hundreds of licensees is taking its role seriously. The uh, Chamber of Commerce has been having negotiations with licensees, with the Port Authority, with the government, to try and persuade the government to back off. Back off and withdraw new taxes under the Customs Management Act that came into effect last year. However, that hasn't happened and the Chamber has since instructed its lawyer, Fred Smith, to defend the Hawksbill Creek Agreement. Freeport is a free F R. E E next P O R T port free port. That means no taxes. It's very simple. Smith and attorney Kerry Leonard, who has also been working closely with the chamber, are convinced that if the government uphold the agreement, this island would see a real economic boom, which they say will be a win-win situation for both sides. It isn't as if everybody's getting a free ride. The the idea of the Free exemptions is to encourage investment, investment into the country. Do everything to make it boom, and overnight the government revenue will increase, as it did in years past. But if you continue to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, what you're doing is achieving the exact opposite of what you want. The attorneys say the legislation is hurting Bahamians more than it's hurting foreigners. Approximately 80 to 90 percent of all the licensees of the Grand Bahama Port Authority are Bahamian citizens. I encourage all licensees who have been paying these new illegal taxes to make careful copies of their records, to maintain them, because at the end of the day, this class action will require the government to repay to every licensee every red cent that the government has illegally exacted through these new customs laws. The action is currently being drafted and will be filed within a few weeks. Meantime, Minister of State for Finance Michael Halkidis has declined to comment on the matter pending notice of legal action. Charisma Robinson, ZNES Network News. Switching gears now, law enforcement officers seizing over $2 million in suspected cocaine at the Freeport Container Port today. Reports are that the drugs was discovered around 8 o'clock this morning when officers from DEU along with Bahamas and U.S. Customs conducted a search of a 20-foot container at the transshipment terminal. Police say a total of 209 pounds of suspected cocaine was packed in three separate bags and hidden among bags of coffee. Now, no arrest was made. However, police investigation are continuing. And a U.S.-based Christian tour company celebrating its 40th sailing of the sea right here on Grand Bahama. For the past few years, Templeton Cruise Company chartered the Carnival cruise ship and visited the Bahamas. The group made a stop in Port Lacaya where several gospel bands performed in the Count Basie Square. Jeff Templeton says 1,200 passengers traveled with the ship and about 100 disembarked the ship to take part in the mini concert. Today we were invited by uh, Pastor Eddie Victor to bring some of the groups who are performing on our cruise to Port Lacaya to participate in a gospel concert here at the square. So we're excited to be here. Some of our passengers are here to uh, celebrate and enjoy the fellowship. Now one of the groups performing at today's event was the Fifers. We're going to perform a little bit in, in your center stage here in your square of your town. Or, and uh, we're real excited about that to be able to do that. We're performing on the cruise line and we've done almost 30 of those cruises in our in our history and our career and so it's just exciting to be able to sing to people and meet new people like you now the templeton cruise will depart freeport at seven this evening and as Grand Bahamas multi-million dollar redevelopment reef resort prepares to make its grand debut, there is another resort property on Grand Bahama that has become a destination of choice. Joan Davis Roll has this story. It's priceless. We found a little slice of heaven. 
It's prices because from time to time, as the service industry comes under fire, there's a prices endorsement money could not buy, a high rating coming from someone who continues to call a small resort, Old Bahama Bay, nestled in West Grand Bahama, a home away from home. I've been coming to the Bahamas for probably almost, we won't divulge my age, but almost 40 years, primarily NASA on Paradise Island. And we ended up coming by boat for the first time, and we ended up in Kaya, which is lovely, but we were there for two nights and came over here and spent one night, and I must confess, Sydney and Quincy fell in love with it also, our Bedlington Terriers, and we were departing, and Bob said, why are we leaving? I, that's, that's a piece of heaven. And returned and we were here for probably almost a month and then we've been returning ever since. For American visitor Patty Biss and her companions, their love affair and countless vacations on Grand Bahama go far beyond sun, sand and sea. Total relaxation if you want to just shut the world off and get away. Uh, the, the feeling that your family, I find that all of the bah Bahamian islands are wonderful, but there's something here that is a little extra special. And I would say that the people make, make it that way. And each and every person here uh, goes that extra step to make it special. You, you don't find that. You can go to five-star hotels all over the world, but this is a special touch that's from the heart. It's a Bahamian heart. Joan Davis Roll, Set It As Network News. Stay with us, The Bahamas Tonight continues right after this. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. A local entrepreneur is calling on Grand Bahamians to support local businesses, particularly those who specialize in Bahamian-made products. Dino Duncan, a young artist, creates everything from bookmarks to conch shells and decorative bottles. But he says he is disappointed in the level of support he gets from residents on this island and the harsh criticisms he has to face as a struggling entrepreneur. Why can't I, as a young man, be an uh, entrepreneur, per se? and do my, grow my own business, build my own business with support from, from the, the, the Grand Bohemian public. Why is it so hard to, to support one, a young man as myself trying to make it on his own? Number one, they say, I need to find another job. This, um, they don't have any money. I don't want, well, um, my stuff, a lot of them say the things are too expensive, but I don't think they t take into consideration the work that goes into make the, and the preparation that goes into making the stuff. And a lot like to give advice to the same people who don't buy. They like to give advice on where, what I should do and where I should go. While Duncan is often told that he should get a traditional job, he says he will continue to follow his passion. I would like them to support more people in my industry, especially younger entrepreneurs who are trying to make it positively, not going out there selling drugs or killing, breaking in, stealing. Not just young people, of course, but older people as well. And uh, I mean, just to say, just at least just, even if it's just to help them, help the person, just buy something. So a lot of people say they don't need the, thing that, the things that I sell. Like, buy it and give it to someone. It's a gift. You can give it as a gift. You can use it as a decorative piece, anything of that sort. Now, Duncan says residents should support their own and promote what is Bahamian. A local organization continuing its mission to reach out to the young men of this island. This coming Saturday, a one-day forum will be held to address the many social ills facing this sector of our population. Sabrina Brown has this story. The Reach Out Youth Organization is once again tackling the issue of crime head-on. The ministry is preparing to hold its sixth annual Boys to Men Conference, Let Your Story Be Your Glory, under the theme, The Possible Dream. Founder Dudley Said. A lot of times, a lot of people sit on the sidelines and complain. So Reach Out Ministry has decided to host this conference 
to let the young boys know that you could be like Pastor Lockhart. You could be like Bishop Hall. You could be like Henry Rowe from Urban Manual. You could be like the Christian Council President. So our whole purpose is to bring positive men throughout the community of Grand Bahama so the kids can know it's okay to dream. It's okay to believe in yourself. Host Pastor Robert Lockhart of Calvary Temple Assemblies of God and President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Reverend Keith Meadows, endorsed the event. It's so exciting to see leaders from church groups, um, um, sports groups, um, other youth groups throughout the community coming and exposing young men and women um, um, to good adult um, role models, especially male role models that can speak into the lives of our young men. So many of our young men have been marginalized and so I think this is a wonderful thing that um, our Brother Said has taken on and so I would encourage fathers, those of you that are listening and watching, to bring your sons. Bishop Joe Hall will be among the speakers on Saturday. He believes the forum is significant. Our society has become injected with the ills of homosexuality, alcoholism, lesbianism, and you name it, too numerous to mention. But I yea say today, rise up, ye men of God, and let us do the work of God. The policing arm of Urban Renewal has also come on board in an effort to save the young men of this nation, Inspector Henry Roll. Among the social ills and the crime that we are facing in this country today, we, you can see that we are bombarded with these issues and working together with the youth leaders to forge a good relationship helps to mold the minds of some of our young people who sometimes often find deviant behavior in their lives. The Boys to Men Conference is set for Saturday morning at 10 o'clock at Calvary Temple Church on Clive Avenue. Sabrina Brown, SNS Network News. Thanks, Sabrina. Well, some help coming today for kids with cancer. Rose Delancey and the Future Network making a donation today to help young cancer patients make the trip to Camp Good Days, which is a summer get time getaway in New York. Rose Delancey says she wants to help those kids in need. So far, we've identified about four to five, but there's a lot more out there. Right? And I'd like um, the public, if they're aware of any child that has had cancer, who has cancer or sickle cell, right, to contact that immediately. They get everything is free. They don't, all they do is pack their bag and we go and we have one great time up there. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Right? And if you've not had cancer, right, you're the odd one out. Right? And they're chaperoned by professional people, right? Uh, we've had a lot of experience with uh, people with cancer and sickle cell, and um, they have a wonderful time. Now, the cost of travel for each child is estimated to be around $800. Coordinator of the program on Grand Bahama, Terry Goldsmith, is grateful for this support. To commemorate my 50th birthday, I decided that I wanted to run uh, a half marathon in San Francisco this year. And so the race will be. Um, not only to raise awareness uh, about the children who are suffering from cancer and other related uh, illnesses here in the Bahamas, um, but it'll also be to raise at least $5,000 um, to help these children to travel to Camp Good Days this, um, this summer. It will not only give them an opportunity uh, to have some fun, but it'll also uh, allow for the people who care for them uh, some well-deserved um, um, break. And so I am delighted Stay with us, Ricardo Lightborn is up next with a check on sports. everybody and welcome to Sports and Ricardo Light when this one goes out to the folks over there in Andros, the Grand Bahama Football Championships playing on the weekend in the Rocks, baby. The Grand Bahama Bulldogs and Igmar Mora Crushers went at it, so let's cross the creek and head down to the Pine Bowl. The Grand Bahama Bulldogs and Igmar Mora Crushers in the trenches in the Pine Bowl and what a game. The Crushers with the pigskin and D-roll under center. The crossing route by the wide out and some positive yards for Igmar Mora. 
First down and 10 and pressing. The crushes D-roll in the shotgun and pass. This time is intercepted and the Bulldogs defense stepping up. The Bulldogs with the football and Leo Kemp under center. The pretty good pass here. The wide out also with some opening in the crushes defense. The catch and a first down. The Bulldogs with the momentum in their favor and the pass offense working. This was the game the Bulldogs wanted so badly. Ball turnover and on downs. The Bulldogs defense simply heads up and a good stop. The crushes three and out and punting. Watch the coverage on this play. You talk about missed tackles and smart running by the Bulldogs returner. The result, he will have a 70-yard punt return and it'll go all the way in for the touchdown. Celebrate big man, you burn the Crushes defense. The Crushes went back to basic football, run, run, and Avalon Kelly and Geno Jones went to work. First and 10, this one going right at you. The hitch pass to Avalon Kelly and he's off to the races. And just like that, we've got a tie ball game. The game was back and forth with neither team able to protect the football and the result scores. This is football. Hey, however you get the points, you will take it. Final play in the half, hard-nosed football, and again, the pigskin is hard to hold on to. 12-12 is your score. Some players need to know that this is not sexy. Cover that up, bro. The hunting season is open. Third quarter was another doozy, and playing from the scrapbook, the pitch to Gino, and Gino simply finds some space down the line. 60 yards, he will go in for the touchdown and an 18-12 lead. The Grandma Bulldogs went away from the game plan and the crushes stepped up the heat. Henry Duncan felt it. Some of the players needed some assistance to get off the field. It was that kind of game. The Crushes won an 18 to 12 in the Grand Bahama Championship. And Gino and Avalon said mission accomplished. Today was a real ball for us. We started off kind of slow. But in the second half, we really picked it up. Our guys picked up on key blocks and allowed us to run big. I'm the bruiser, so I, I'm known to take the contact and run down the middle and take all the beating. But we, we had a good game. Our blockers did well. And our guys spread the field, so allowed me to work and maneuver. Congrats to the eight Mara Crushers, the Grand Bahama Football Champions, and reason to celebrate. Well, the 18-12 loss for the Grand Bahama Bulldogs was hard to swallow, says uh, coach and uh, player Freddie Dean, and also Captain Stephen Moxie had a few words. We played good in the first half. After that, everybody know football. Everybody's coach on the field, right? So the crushers just take advantage, because all of a sudden, everybody who don't know football, know football. And you know that don't work. You have one coach. You send the place. You send the place. They doing what they want to. Do. It's nice to uh, you know come back out once again and you know just have the young guys out and let them understand what football is all about. And there's a lot more football to come into the Pine Bowl. Well, the Grand Bahama Basketball Association uh, on court last night over there at the St. George's Gym with Men of Honors defeating the Arawak Stars at 82-80. Krishad Thompson uh, posted a 22-point ball game and also Clemente Martin with 22. The Tiger Predators down the uh, Saturday ball is 73-64. Michael Colbrook had a great game, 31 points, and Clayton Smiley-Miller had some 35 in the losing cause. Also, there was some high school basketball played over there in Abaco with the Gap Junior Boys defeating Universal, uh, Smith Universal 54-16. Hakeem Roberts had a 22-point game and also Abaco Junior New boys outscoring uh, Smith 30 to 20. Hats off goes to Leslie for well. As far as uh, the Agape, well, they also defeated Abaco Central 44 to 26. Dimitri Moxie 21 points in Agape girls defeated Abaco Central 19 to 3. Lakeisha K uh, Garvey had a nine point game in the senior boys. It was Agape defeating Abaco Central 56 uh, to 36. Godfrey Roll Jr. 23 points, not bad. They'll play again on Wednesday. They also played here in Grand Bahama, and you had uh, Jack Haywood at Junior, Bo Junior Girls uh, defeating Lucanda National 6-3, uh, uh, St. George's 12, Grand Bahama Academy 3, Tabernacle big over Igmar Rock 43-7, Sister Mary Patricia Russell, they clip Catholic High 17-4 in the Junior Boys action, Bishop Michael Lella 26, Jack Haywood 23, St. Paul's, they defeated Igmar Rock 21-18, Tabernacle over St. George's 43-16, and the Senior Boys in the quarterfinal play, Igmar Rock bag, BMES 28-20, and Sunland, they put away Jack Hayward, 47-38. Don't forget that there's also softball. Yes, they are playing at the primary school level. Martintown boys of Lewis Yard, 14-3. Sunland shut out Maury's Moore, 11-zip. Hugh Campbell outscoring Tabernacle 8-4. Walter Parker with a 6-3 win over BMES Primary. Bottled Hill 6, Holmes Rock 3, and Freeport Gospel defeated. That is Freeport Primary, 22-4. That was a mouthful, and uh, got to say it for the kids. Uh, only for the kids, y'all. Just for the kids. <laughs> That's it for sports. <laughs>